This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. John Luther and his wife Kay tried to make their home in Honeyor, New York, a place where their children could thrive and have fun growing up. But on the evening of April 12, 1992, they were reminded just how quickly a child's playfulness can unexpectedly get out of hand. It was about a six o'clock on a Sunday evening. Shane and Kyle were um, wrestling with me. Hey guys, stop the wrestling. The house was quite cluttered with toys, so I decided I'd pick up the house. When you're a mother, you kind of listen, you know, where they're at and what they're up to. Hey, Kyle, try this. Shane, I heard him say to Kyle, Kyle, try this. I spun around to see just what he was showing Kyle to do. Shane! All of a sudden, he knew he couldn't breathe. What I saw was that Shane was gasping, kind of stamping his feet. I hit him probably two or three times on the back. That didn't work. Uh, my next reaction was to give him a Heimlich move. The hitting on the back, the Heimlich wasn't working. Yes, this is Key Luther, 126 Break Road. My four-year-old son is choking to death. There's something in his throat and we can't get it out. Stay on the phone. I want to get an ambulance started. He's on fire. I'm going to get an ambulance started. Mike, right, give me a red and white going, 126 Break Road. Help was immediately dispatched. But the advanced life support paramedics were 25 miles away at the hospital. When we continue, right in the abdomen and bring them inward and upward. She said something about blood coming. They were getting blood. And, uh, so I knew this, this isn't right. The Heimlich was not working. Murray Henry had been a dispatcher with the Ontario County Sheriff's Department for 14 years. We get these calls frequently. Usually when they say, my child is choking and they're all upset, you know, you can hear a child screaming in the background. And that's the sure sign that the child probably isn't choking. I'm the ambulance right now. His teeth are clenched. Okay. Are you alone with him? And this one, I could hear absolutely nothing in the background. So that just clicked in that she's probably right. Her baby probably isn't breathing. All right, fire dispatcher to Honey Ori, Honey Ori, 126 hour Lake Road for a four-year-old choking. With the paramedics en route, EMTs with the Honeyoy Richmond Volunteer Rescue Squad got the ambulance from the local station and headed for the scene. Do you know the Heimlich method? No, I'm not sure. Okay, he did try it? Try it again. Try it again. Try it again. Put the, put the hands, put his fists and under the ribs. Under the ribs, right into the abdomen, and bring them inward and upward. Okay. She said something about blood coming. They were getting blood, and uh, so I knew that this, this isn't right. Is the child conscious? Is he conscious yet? No, no, barely. Okay. Try it again. Try it again. Now he's doing mouth to mouth. Okay. He knows how to do mouth to mouth? Yeah. All right, can he get his mouth open and clear out whatever might be in it? Can he get his mouth open and get out whatever? No, he can't. His teeth are clenched. All right. You're eating that, honey? 
Assistant Fire Chief John Mason and his wife Sandy were closest to the scene. They reported four-year-old choking. Our tones went off, saying that there was a baby choking at 126, and I live at 131. Okay. Yeah, I think there's going to be a medic coming in your front door right now. Yeah, they're here. Okay. You go, go talk to them. Okay, the thing that concerned me with this one, I think, the Heimlich uh, method, which usually works, was not working. I, I tried to hang with the maneuver and nothing seemed to be working. It won't come out. I tried to open his mouth to see an obstruction and he proceeded to bite me and then locked up his jaw. Yeah, he's still breathing. Yeah. Shane did not want anybody messing with him. You know, everybody was trying to do things to him, push on his stomach, um, hitting his back. John, he says, uh, we're not going to lose you, we're not going to lose you. And at that point, I knew that he was in really big trouble. I would say it was in a state of panic at that point. I felt absolutely helpless. And it's probably in the first time in 25 years in the fire service that I felt that way because of uh, not being able to correct the situation. As the ambulance headed for the hospital, they radioed to the advanced life support unit to take the same route so they could meet on the way. Among the rescuers treating the little boy was EMT Lee Stat. We tried the Heimlich maneuver and some abdominal thrusts. It just didn't do anything. His lips are blue, his fingers are getting blue on him. He's just uh, getting oxygen. That's all there is to it. I've been on a lot of calls. Sometimes a feeling will come over you where you know something tragic is going to happen to that person. In fact, sometimes you can almost predict that they're going to die. Ten miles from the hospital, the advanced life support unit met up at the ambulance. When paramedic Bernie Levitt took over Shane's care, he had been choking for 14 minutes. When I first jumped on board, I thought that I could go in there and get that object out and get him breathing again. But he was completely lifeless. He was blue as could be. The basic ENT that was on board had this very fearful look in his face. And I can tell a lot by looking at the crew. And I couldn't see anything but his vocal cords. I tried to intubate the child and pass the tube through the cords, and then it would stop, like I was coming up against a brick wall with an intubation tube. The slower his heart rate went, the faster I could feel mine pounding through my chest. I think the scariest moment was when he went into respiratory arrest. He just was not breathing anymore. There was no air exchange at all. I've been doing this for 26, 27 years. It's a long time, and you're bound to see kids get killed. It doesn't sit well with you. When you see a youngster, in a situation like that, or. His heart rate slowed down to 40, and I knew with another 60 seconds, he'd be in cardiac arrest. At that point, I decided to do a needle crackle throtomy. Basically, it's where you take an IV catheter needle, and you stick it through his neck, and then you ventilate through that needle directly into his lungs. I've never done one on a human being before. As soon as the supplemental oxygen was getting in through the needle, it's just like turning the light on almost immediately. I could hear my monitor in the background slowly picking up, going faster and faster and faster. Now I could see his lips were getting bright red again. I could feel a feeling of relief over myself, but I knew that the child wasn't out of the woods yet. The peg, shaped like a golf tee, was still lodged deep in four-year-old Shane's throat when he was admitted to Thompson Hospital and put under the care of emergency physician Tom Benzoli. What happened to the young man is once he got this in his throat, it oriented so the tip was pointing down his airway 
As he took a breath in, it would get sucked into his airway and eventually it lodged there. You're doing good. Dad may well have made a difference with his Heimlich because he may have been able to dislodge this, perhaps not remove it, but dislodge it enough to let his child get a few more gasps of air. Cut sequence. There it is. He started screaming at the top of his lungs. And I'll tell you what, that was music to my ears. I stood up, I said, he's okay. Shane Luther suffered no permanent injuries, but he came away from the incident a changed kid. Shane's a wiser little boy. Very cautious of what he plays with, what his little brother plays with. If Kyle tries to put something in his mouth, Shane's right there, takes it right away from him. It's not always a happy ending that everybody sees, like on TV. The first thing I thought of that I was working on him was my own child. How you doing? Being a father myself, thinking about the father sitting up there, looking completely shocked, I could feel what he was feeling inside. I learned to respect the ambulance crew and the other volunteers. You guys were terrific. I've learned a lot more about what Bernie does and how much of a volunteer he is. Without Bernie, there, there probably wouldn't be a shame. Daddy, I'm gonna go over and get Thank you for getting that toy out of my throat. Don't play those toys anymore, because they're small. All right.